So I'd like to uh, run through some things here so that uh, you feel comfortable setting up your incubator and we can have a successful year this year with getting maximum numbers of eggs to hatch. So you'll start by opening the uh, incubator up and uh, you'll see that in the bottom here there's a series of grooves typically. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but these have to be filled with water. So let's dump some water in here. Go, just fill them up. Whoops, I spilled some through the hole. That's fine. So, um, and next you have to put this screen over this opening because when the chicks hatch out of these eggs, the the uh, last stage is to move the uh, the eggs out of the turn racks and right onto this grate for the last uh, day or two right before they hatch. So, if the chicks are going to be running around on here to learn how to walk. Um, we can't have any of these corners popping up, so you're going to have to secure these. And I just have some simple push pins for this side. And you want to just secure them right down like that. Uh, on this corner here, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to have to use like a straight pin here and put it in at an angle to really hold this, uh, this corner down. So I'm going to turn it this way. go a real shallow angle look at that holds it down really tightly if you don't have any of those you can even use a bent paper clip into here to help hold it uh, to help hold it down look at that all right that's gonna help keep this down I don't want any chicks dying because they got caught in some little corner and got pinned down in here all right now it's time to put the egg turner in you just have to fit this in so that the cord goes through one of the grooves. There's grooves all around the corners here. All right. And of course, we can't put eggs in yet. We have to get this started for several days to stabilize the temperature. And for that, we're going to have to include these uh, thermometers. This one has some nice clear thermometers included. We'll just set them right on top because we have to make sure we can get this to 99.5 degrees. Fahrenheit. Put these in a power strip so that there's no surges and uh, best if you can plug it into a GFCI switch. Turn it on and we have red lights and since there's no eggs in here there's no harm for killing anything. I'm just going to crank this up to maximum temperature and we'll see. I can see right through these windows and read the thermometers as they stabilize. We want to get it right to 99.5 degrees or 100 degrees is fine. Uh, uh, basically you're going to have a plus or minus one degree variance either way. So if you shoot for uh, 99 and a half degrees, you'll get it right there. All right, so now we just have to wait until our uh, uh, temperatures stabilize and, um, and, uh, and then we can put in eggs after we're absolutely certain everything's working on this. Don't just put eggs in and plug it in. It has to run for a few days beforehand. So I'm going to let this run for probably a week before I even have eggs in it. Okay, one thing I'd like to mention now is uh, we have our temperature stabilized now at 99 and a, and a half degrees. According to these, now we're ready for eggs. So what, we, what I would do is to place the eggs right in here. And uh, you'll want to place them. These are uh, quail size so I can just place them right in any any shape they won't fall through if this is just a regular chick egg turner then what you have to do is not place the egg in lengthwise this way but horizontally like so and then that way they won't fall through the holes and this egg turner is just going to slowly turn in a 24 hour period it's going to turn twice to keep the eggs rotating um, it's simulating what mama quail would be doing with the eggs in a nest because she would be working them under and slowly turning them throughout the day. But now we put the eggs in and now you can study them right through these amazing windows right here on these uh, panels. So that's how you're going to look through to look at the eggs. You can open it. Um, I guess you're going to do it once a day probably if you want to take an egg and candle it so you can see the embryo developing and then gently put it back in. You don't want to jostle these around and most importantly you don't want to leave this open for too long because the temperature is going to vary. What uh, is critical for raising uh, bobwhites 
as any eggs is a constant temperature and humidity. All right, and check through there to make sure that there's water still in those reservoirs under there. And then cap this right back up as quickly as you can. Um, don't leave that off for extended periods of time. Now, if we speed up the clock a little bit towards uh, the end of uh, of the incubation study, what you're going to want to do then is the last day or two, you're going to want to lift this out and then move the eggs over you know, onto the screen. Okay, put them all on here, nice and gently, for the last day, maybe two days, and then cover this back up, because when they hatch, they're gonna need that high humidity in there to uh, help them, that heat and humidity, to help them uh, uh, come out of the egg. Uh, I've seen some that were too dry, and the baby's feathers actually got stuck to the egg, because it was too dry. So. You really want a high humidity situation for them to come around. You want them to all interact with each other because when one is jostling, then it jostles another one, and it keeps them active and, and encourages them to move around. You want to wait till they um, till they hatch. They should all hatch within a 24-hour period, and now you'll hear them peeping and running around in there, and now it's time to move them into the brooder. And for that, that'll be on our next video to show you how to set up a bobwhite-tailed brooder.